David, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to me. I'm really excited to hear your story. Very glad to do it. Thank you. Awesome. So David, tell me a little bit about you and what it is that originally brought you to seek out the Super Learner course. Yeah, so short introduction about me. Um, I'm 26 years old. I come from Spain. I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, but I'm living at the moment in Germany, in Stuttgart. I work for the company Mercedes here. And yeah, well, pretty much all my life I've been very passionate about learning in, in every sense. And after I finished my university studies, I thought, well, this is such a happy moment that I can start to learn only things that I choose and what I want. Even though I'm very happy with my studies, of course, any university degree comprises a certain proportion of subjects that you really don't feel happy that you have to pass them. <laughs> yeah, that's and, a nice way to put it. Yeah. And since then, I started to try to learn more stuff. And then I came up um, in, in Udemy after one round of Udemy uh, offers with a course to learn how to learn. And that was your 1.0 course. That was around, um, I believe, June or May of 2015 when I first found it. And I just inscribed and I started to do it. Unfortunately, I ran a little bit out of time some months later and I dropped it for around half a year. And then middle of last year, I came back to it, found out there is a 2.0 version, so I purchased it as well. And <laughs> I have started to seriously and continuously follow the course since July or August of last year. Awesome. So what uh, changes or benefits have you kind of observed in the course? I mean, how would you compare how you l learned, read and remember before to how you do now? Mm. So just as a general explanation, I, I have posted about it a couple of times either in the Super Learner group, uh, but I did not get very much or almost anything into speed reading because since I started with the course, <clears throat> I really love the, the section about memory and I completely agree with the changes that you have done recently, making it even a more central part in the course. Uh, I actually, to be honest, I just felt there is so much stuff and so much potential there that it's impossible to, to cover it just with the few video lectures that you very well did. But then I found out there's so much stuff out there, so many books, so many other techniques. Yeah. Through your course and through your podcast, I, it opened me to so many possibilities, not only, uh, Dr. Metivier and all of the other wonderful people that you interviewed. Uh, and then I thought, okay, I have to hit pause here and I really want to stay in memory until I really, until I really feel comfortable with this, or at least I think I've reached, um, three quarters of the potential that there is without investing on it all my time. I mean, I, and one of the reasons was that I, well, if you tell this story as a success story in the future, uh, my story wouldn't be one story of someone who struggled with studying or learning all, all of his or, or her life. I'm sure you have plenty of those, but that's not my case. I, I did always do fairly well through high school, even through university. And I've always considered myself and been considered by others as rather smart and intelligent person, but I'm also very demanding with myself. And I have always been somehow very aware of my weaknesses rather than my strengths. And through all my life, even though I managed to go fairly well through all these stages, I have always had the feeling that memory and rotation was kind of my bottleneck in this whole process. Um, for example, during my engineering uh, studies, even though I did great in all the calculus, algebra or, or physics subjects, I struggled to pass the material science or stuff like this, where you do have to retain a lot of things. And same story in high school, uh, maths was my thing, uh, language, uh, as a Spanish language and history was not. And the same thing with uh, languages. I was, I also studied Russian and I do study it. And, but surprisingly, the grammar was never a problem for me. And all of these declensions, okay, it took time, but I got it. It was just a matter of time while I have felt for the last two years that vocabulary has gotten me completely stuck in my comprehension of what others are saying. I understand what they say. I could even write the word, but I, I don't know it because my vocabulary is so reduced because it takes me so much time to learn it. Interesting. So, 
Kaj govoriš po ruski? A, ni plaho, ni plaho. Ni plaho? Interesno. Da, da. Maladjec. Moja debuška je iz Rasi i pa tam učita. A, interesno. Ne nada bilo učiti ni mnoga. Interesno. We should probably switch back to English because yeah. I just realized I'm going to have to subtitle everything that <laughs> that is in Russian. <laughs> so you speak now Spanish, Russian, German. And, and yeah, English, English, obviously. And French and Italian. Um, wow. But Italian is quite a recent acquisition. So that's also something I can tell. I started to learn German while, when I came here and I struggled to the very same. German is also a very uh, grammar heavy language, but I somehow always got the grammar very easily. Uh, however, my comprehension was very far behind and that was pulling me back during the whole process. And I just thought there must be a easier way to learn all of these words, especially, I don't know, I think English, which is your mother tongue and Spanish, they are not so rich in vocabulary as German or Russian, which is crazy. The amount of words they have for something we say with one word. And there I felt completely overwhelmed. And when I started improving this aspect, is when, for example, in language learning, I have really felt the the whole potential starting to unlock. Wow. So tell me about that. I mean, wh you said you started to learn Russian. Was that before or after Super that Learner? And, and tell me a little bit about how the memory techniques that you've been focusing on have expanded. I mean, you said mm. you just started to learn Italian, which is very, very cool. Uh, what are you learning now? I mean, uh, to walk me through how the vocabulary study is going for you. Yeah, so um, I started to learn Russian a little bit more than two years ago, more or less from the end of 2014 until the end of 2016. Uh, with During these two years, I managed to reach a acceptable B1 level, I think. I can kind of speak fluently, but I still have a lot of problems understanding what they said to me. And then is when I said I discovered kind of, as I, told, as I said, in summer, um, deeply discovered the course and I saw so much potential I decided to improve this and implement it to my language learning. So first I worked on developing the, the skills in general through the games, through the exercises, then I moved to memorizing words and numbers and playing cards and these kind of things. And then in November I decided it was time to finally use it for language learning. I decided first I needed a framework, so I read uh, Fluent in three months by Benny Lewis, who you interviewed, and that gave me kind of the whole picture. And end of November, I started kind of a pilot project with Italian. I decided to like kind of step back from Russian because I have, I'm conditioned by these two years of learning it in the old way. And I wanted to start something new and fresh from zero, which could be kind of speakable for me because I come from Spain and my mother tongue is relatively similar, but still completely new. I have never studied any Italian at all. And all I could say is just from hearing it in the movies or things like this. So I said, okay, let's do a fresh start, new project, start from zero, see where it gets me. And now I am eight weeks into this kind of project and well, combining daily sessions of around 30 to 40 minutes of memorizing words, plus I do two or three italki lessons every week. Uh, I would say right now I'm uh, I have a pretty solid B2 already in, Incredible. in Italian. Incredible. Yeah. And in so you're bit. using markers and essentially spaced repetition and visualization to memorize all these vocabulary words. Yeah, and I do use the, the kind of techniques uh, used by Dr. Metivier. I build the tone of memory palaces and I store there all the words. I don't use it for the sake of uh, recalling it in real conversation, but I think having the words in memory palaces really helps to rehearse them. So once per week, once per week I say, okay, I will rehearse in my head all the week, all the words I learned this week. If this were, if I didn't know that this week I have used these three palaces, I wouldn't know where to find them in my head. So I have like uh, 15 palaces already filled in, and but I know the two or three that I have been in this week and all the others, they, they are words from previous weeks. So I know where I have to go to rehearse exactly what I studied this week. That is and I so think that's cool. pretty powerful. Yeah, David, I want to commend you on a few things. First, yes. I want to point out that you're a perfect example of brute force learning, uh, which is, you know, you're taking a lot of people 
maybe get upset at all the extra resources and they're like, well, why do you have to send me to YouTube videos? Why do I need to go download this worksheet? Why do I need to go read this blog post? But you're living proof of exactly why is yeah. you learn different things in different places that just couldn't fit into one course. And also I think there's so much value in you having learned and then relearned memory palace technique. And I also love Anthony Mativier stuff. But then on top of that, I think, I, I think you deserve a lot of praise for actually going out using the stuff, but not just using it, adapting it to your own mm. needs. So you've gone ahead and said, look, I don't, maybe you don't want to use software or flashcards every week. You want to be able to do your own space repetition just in your head. And I don't, you know, whatever your reason is, it's a good reason, but you've taken this technique and said, okay, I'm going to do temporal memory palaces. Mm. And I think that that's another really great thing to point out is like, you're adapting the technique to your own needs and yeah. not fixed in this rigid way because Anthony always likes to say these are methods, not yeah. procedures or not yeah. uh, systems. And I think that's such a really, really important, important yeah. thing. Exactly. Uh, Anthony recommends to make one palace for each letter. And I found out that doesn't work for me because Incredible. if I learned 10 words today, probably they start with 10 different letters. So I would have put one word in every of 10 different palaces while I just follow a linear progression and for example, I finished today in the position number five of a palace made of 20. If tomorrow I learn 10 words, it's going to be the position six to 15 of that same palace. And I'm, and the day after I pick it where I left it. So Incredible. I do save a lot of mental travel in time. Tell me a word this. that you learned uh, yesterday in Italian. Yesterday? Uh, I don't know about this. Uh, yesterday, what was yesterday? Yeah, I learned the word reasonable, uh, ragionevole. And... Marcio, uh, ragionevole. Well, I we have a game in in. Well, the game is quite known. It's a children game where you are like jumping on numbers. Uh, in Spanish, it's called la rayola, and in uh, in Spanish also, when a football player kind of hits the ball without letting it touch the floor, that's uh, it's called to make a volea. So I imagine a football player playing this and hitting. Evolea while he's playing La Rayona. And that, well, I at the end of it, I find my grandma explaining him that this is a reasonable approach to making, to, to hitting a, a score. Wow. So three it's connections kind of to three different uh, pieces of pre-existing knowledge, three different symbols and sounds, obviously, of the, the sound of the bole, the sound of the yeah. game. Very, very smart the way that you've done that. One thing I do, I don't know if it might be interesting for you. Um, in my case, I have three very strong languages. It's uh, Spanish, English, and German. German because I work in German already for two years. English, I speak with my girlfriend in English for five years because we didn't have any other language uh, in common when we met. And Spanish is obviously my mother tongue. So I do, I do markers in all of those languages. For example, for this marker, I use Spanish words. So I introduce my grandma as part of it because I associate her with Spanish. So if I see the image, it can happen otherwise that I don't know in which language are these images coded. So because my grandma is there, I know I have to look for the Spanish words for those. When I want, when I make a marker using German words, then I use, I don't know, a work colleague. And then I know that this marker is in German. And this is also something I found was confusing me at the beginning because I didn't know if I'm using the sounds from the English words or from the German words or from the Spanish words. So I found I had to add this also. I do the same thing. I blend. And I always like to tell people that the more languages you learn, the richer your sound library is. And so I can, mm. you know, there are sounds that we just don't have in English uh, mm. that they have in Russian and like, e, for example. Yeah. And so I have just a richer sound library. There are sounds that we have in English that I don't have in any other language that I can map to like TH. So really, really cool. How much faster do you think you'll be able to learn languages in the future now that you have this technique? I mean, obviously you learned a lot of languages before and now you're continuing to learn. Well, um, several times faster for sure. I, I, well, I, after I finished this kind of pilot project with Italian, which I timed to be uh, limited to 12 weeks, that was my initial idea. Now I just, I finished yesterday my week number eight. 
and I just wanted to see where I where I arrive. The initial goal was B2, and I think I'm very close to it, if not already there. And well, many would say maybe Italian is not such a challenging language for me, but that's exactly why I chose this one because it was about improving and testing the method that I created for myself. I think next I will try to give a boost a boost to my Russian. I think I will come back to it after these three months pause, and I will try basically complete different approach. Before I was I had a particular teacher, two hours per week. And I was doing I was doing not that much study of myself. And uh, now I will change to basically using these techniques, the brute force learning approach, and I talk sessions merely for conversation. And probably I will give it another seven or eight weeks and then I will see where it brings me. But I expect to make at least as much progress as I did in each one of the two years I was studying. Good for you, man. Incredible. David, I know you have to go in just one minute. I wanted to ask. Uh, I one... got 10 minutes more. Ah, okay. Great. If you want. Yeah, I have a talk, I talk a session. Ah, uh, okay, cool. But my teacher was okay to postpone 10 minutes. Well, I think that's So great. we have still that time. That's really cool. Cool, cool. Uh, well, really, I only did have one last question, which is, would you have any tips or advice for other students? I know a lot of people don't make it as far as you did. They, like you said, they kind of get burnt out or get busy. Do you have any tips uh, that you would advise other people to have your level of success with the course? Mm. Let me think for a second. Mm. Well, first tip would be get informed and learn from different sources. So, for example, in my case, even though everything started with you, from you I moved to Dot on TV, then I went to Mark Channel, then I went to other sources, and it's not about reading every book out there, but at least I think it's important to take to get three or four points of view, and then see which part of each of them fits better uh, to your goals. Then the second tip would be try to adapt this to yourself. Like even if I find the the, the what Anthony Metivier teaches wonderful, I tested his approach with uh, one palace, one letter. And after half an hour, I realized it doesn't work for me. So I dropped it, even though I completely respect him and he has taught me so much, then I adapted it to myself. And then my third tip, and I think another key of my success is, I think we, I have to, everyone has to be a little bit um, aware that learning a new method is gonna take an effort. So I think while learning the method, we should choose a topic to learn that doesn't require that much effort from us. For example, this language learning approach was new for me. Therefore, I chose to test it with Italian, which was one potentially simpler and definitely very attractive language for me. So that the, the object, the matter of my study would be not extremely demanding and also attractive for me and motivating. Therefore, I could invest all my motivation and my energy in really improving the method and applying it. Incredible. Incredible. Well, David, and I once the method is safe, then you can go to more complex and maybe more boring topics if you need to learn them. I really like that. I think that's super wise advice. And definitely, I agree with you on the kind of there's no, I don't, I don't look at my competitors as competitors. I look at them as other people who are willing to come in and make my students even better than they are. Oh, and I, you know, I think like I'm in, in this wonderful position where I can go out and tell people, read my competitors books, you know, and people yeah. come back and tell me, Hey, this was really, really good. You should recommend it. And I do. And I'm happy to totally yeah. because you know, it, it's just about getting students to the right place and getting them where they want to go as clearly you are well, well on your way. So I really appreciate you sharing the story with us. Just incredible to see what you've been able to do. And, and I'm so thankful that uh, we got to hear your story today. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, very, would be very happy to see if you could share it and it could inspire others also to do the same, that these kind of um, concepts are for everyone, not only for those who struggle. Uh, if you are okay and you are not fine with it, you can go from okay to great mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. through these techniques. That's what I did. Absolutely. All right, David. Well, thanks so much. I do hope you'll keep in touch. Let me know if you need anything at all. Thank you too. Was very right, happy to friend. talk to you and see you after so much time listening. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good rest of the evening and keep all in right. touch. Ciao, hermano. 